Good morning, guys. It's Wednesday, April 29th, 2015. I am coming to you with a podcast after a one-hour phone conversation with my dad yesterday about going to the next level. Um, and I, this quote just kept ringing in my head as I woke up this morning is that, you know, most people don't know how to go to the next level. Um, I was just talking to him about a myriad of things. But before I get into it, I um, wanted to let you know that journals are still on sale. I ordered more. So if you haven't got a chance to get the My Taught You Journal, they're still there. A couple of people have reached out saying, oh, I don't know if I missed it. You haven't missed it. Mugs are sold out, uh, but we reordered those in a different colorway. So as soon as I have them, you will have them. Um, I scheduled a call for May 7th for my taught you journal purchasers. So we're going to do a conference call. I can't cannot wait to kind of chime in with everybody. So mark your calendar. I'm also going to post the date to my Instagram probably today uh, for a conference call with my excellence enthusiast. Um, but without further ado, I want to talk to you about going to the next level. And so dad and I were having this conversation and I was just sort of talking to him about, um, a bunch of different people, people that I know, people that I don't know, that have sort of, you know, plateaued in life, if you will. In many ways, I feel like we graduate from high school or from college or from um, trade school or something and consider that all the sort of learning or development that we need or we zone in, excuse me, we zone in on only learning about our thing or only being interested in our thing. So maybe you, uh, you know, you really enjoy this. And so we kind of don't ever really push ourselves outside of, you know, our, I don't, I won't even say passion because a lot of people's work isn't really their passion. It's just kind of what they're doing to pay their bills. So, um, this one, I would love to continue to discuss. You can ask me anything on my website. There's a tab that says uh, on my taught that says, ask me anything. If you want to have a further conversation about this. And I'm also looking into creating some kind of like message board or comment section, um, with these so that we can all discuss the journals. I love not the journals discuss these podcasts because someone asked me that and I thought it's a great idea and I would love to kind of get feedback on each podcast or continue to talk about it because really it's not a conversation. It's just me talking to you, but I would love to hear back. Um, five points per the usual. Um, and this is next level in life, next level professionally, next level. It it doesn't matter. Um, but just keeping yourself on a path of progression. I really like that is to stay on a path of progression. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, you know, why am I waiting? Why do I wait? Do I wait because I feel like someone has to tell me, someone has to tell me I'm ready to be promoted? You know, are you waiting for someone to come to you and say you're ready for the next level? Sort of like elementary school, you do it for X amount of time and then the school or the system sort of tells you you're ready for sixth grade. You know, after we become adults, that's not really the case. And you can't wait for someone to promote you to the next level. You have to promote yourself. Um, Are you waiting on validation? Are you waiting on acknowledgement? Um, and sometimes we think that there's only one path to get to where we need to go. And we think that only this person or this industry, or, you know, is the gatekeeper and really things that really take off. It's all about innovation. So, you know, that's what I love about Issa Rae is that, okay, she created her own path. So you don't have to make an excuse if you can't get in or you're waiting on someone to give you a pass, create your own path, start working on your own path. And with all these social media channel Um, there's no reason why you can't create your own path. And then I have this note before I go to number two, you won't be ready, but do it anyway. Are you not doing it because you don't think you're ready? Trust me, you're never going to be ready. You're not, you're not going to be ready. You're not going to feel ready. You're likely ready when you, when you, when it starts tap, tap dancing on your mind and you can't stop thinking about it, you're ready. Um, do it anyway. You may not be fully prepared. But nobody's really fully prepared for anything that they're doing. I mean, I think most of us are still out here winging it for the most part. Um, Number two, build your personal brand. I have a podcast on personal branding. I recorded it so long ago, I haven't a single idea what it says. I hope it's good. But I want you to work on building your personal brand. And I found this uh, online, and I felt like this is the best uh, sort of definition of personal brand that I've heard. Your personal brand is the, sh- the strength of your brand 
is how well you are associated with whatever you do. That makes sense? I'll say it again. The strength of your brand is how well you are associated with whatever you do. So how well are you associated? How do people, how are people connecting you with what you do? And is what you do clear? You know, I see some people and it's like some people are selling a couple of things. Some people are doing a couple of things. People are teaching people a couple of things. Flesh out what it is that you do and drill down the center. You don't have to do everything because it's an opportunity. You know, I'm not going to sell hair because I can. I'm not going to sell teas. I'm not going to sell waist shapers because that's not on my personal brand. I'm not connected to those things. I'd just be selling them. So it's not my thing. And this is no tea, no pun intended or shade people that do it. I don't know what your life situation is. I don't know what you've got going on. And if this is working for you and you believe in it, that's totally fine. But for those who are just jumping on for the sake of that is not a clear, that's not really clear with your personal brand. And there is someone, I love the way Mia Ray, if you're listening, hey girl, she sells hair and I love it. It's like same girl, different hair. Her hair looks all cute and different. I like that. I like that. It's clear, it's concise, and it's associated with her brand. Um, So you're going to have to market yourself. And so people are like, how do I do that? How do I market myself? I've been told not to like brag. People think that telling people what you're doing is bragging. I've said this a hundred times before. It's not. It's your social media is not a diary, you know, because you you wouldn't have your diary out for the entire world to see. What it is, is it's to share and it's to market yourself. It's to tell people, this is what I'm doing. This is what I like. This is what I'm good at. And these different things that you're sharing, and you don't always have to say it, but you'll notice that I share a lot of books. That's something about me. That's my personal brand because I read a lot of books. If you come to my house, you'll see I have a lot of books. Um, and so there are just different things. I share I share my cooking. I always have loved to cook. In fact, before I was even going to start Curl Boss or the other business I had, I was going to go to Le Cordon Bleu, but I couldn't come up with the 16 grand. Um, so there's just different things that you should be doing that share who you are. The quotes I've always been, I mean, I've got, pictures of quotes all around my house. I've always been that way. So that's what you're doing to market yourself. And then when you're speaking places or you're participating in something or you're really good at something, show us. You build something, show us. You paint something, show us. Um, Number three, examine your plateau. Uh, Are you the reason that you're still, that you've plateaued? Your fear, your fear of going to the next level And so I have a really good podcast that if you haven't listened to it, that I would encourage you to listen to. It's one of my favorites and it's, um, getting over obstacles, fear and doubt or overcoming it's overcome or getting over, but it's fear, obstacles and doubt. So if you can't find it, it should be easier to find control F on the, my taught you page and just type in obstacles and it should come up. But, um, I, it's a really good one. And it, and it, I think if you're plateauing because of your fear, that's going to help you get over it. Another one, another idea that I say about examining your plateau is, are you doing too much? Have you found that you've gotten way too intricate with the way you're doing things and it's probably time to go back to basics? You know, I think I thought of the story with Gap and how Gap was known for just really clean lines, denims, grays, whites, you know, indigo. And then all of a sudden it's like hot pink, you know, all these different wild colors. And I think while it worked in some ways, it didn't work in others. And so sometimes you just got to go back to what was really working for you. And so, or a lot of times, and I see a lot of different people doing this, copying what other people are doing because you think it's working for them. You now want to see if it works for you. And I don't mind that, but I think that like enhancing your units, like having somebody enhance what you do. And so I'll tell you this, before I was doing Curlbox, I used to consult different brands and I had different designers, different writers, different people. So I would not use one person for all my clients. I would never do that. So that's why it always baffles me when some people are going to either one person's designer or my designer or something like that, because I'm like, well, if I were consulting you, I wouldn't even choose my person for you. I would choose someone else because I think this person is, is, is more astute or just better for your brand. So I think you have to consider that when you are hacking. I think there are some things that, you know, you can lift from other brands, but I think that sometimes we get so caught up in just riding every wave and hopping on every trend that we forget like 
what are we super good at and really amplifying what we're super good at? And so uh, I had a young lady visit me in my office last week and I asked her, you know, I'm not really in tune with, I understand that I have a lot of people that listen to my podcast and that is really cool. But I guess I don't understand, I, I don't really understand like this, the huge appeal. And so I asked and she said, well, it just seems like, she said, well, I follow you on all your social media and it seems like you're just so good at everything. And I just laughed and I'm like, you know what? The stuff that I'm good at, I just do the stuff I'm good at and I scratch all the stuff that I'm not. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. And so I spend my time on the things that I, I'm really good at and the things I'm not, I don't. And so I hope that that helps. A uh, final tip for examining your plateau is to maybe switch it up. Uh, sometimes I do that just in life overall, like, I am the queen of getting into routines. I'm going to go to the gym now, but you know, maybe I'm supposed to do yoga this afternoon, but it's my assistant's birthday. So we're having a little party for her. Uh, but like switching it up some, um, my plan, you know, if you've been doing the same thing and you find that it's not working, try another method, try another journaling method, try something else, uh, and maybe see how that gets you off of your plateau. Um, anybody else have any ideas, uh, tweet me at my leak. Number four, this one is my favorite one. And I know you're probably going to think like, is she serious? But I'm telling you it works because I've done it and it's gratitude. Fall in love with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I'm telling you, if you just start taking a day and start really thanking people for the things that they do for you, whether you feel like they have to do them or not. I mean, if I'm going through the drive through thank you very much for this. I really appreciate it. I'm talking about taking it steps further. When somebody, even people that I employ do their work and it's really great. Thank you very much for going the extra mile because I know you didn't have to do that. Thank you so much for not half-assing this because I know you could have and you didn't. Um, take the gratitude up several notches. And, and if you don't, you know, if do it with other people. And if you want to, if you're using your, my taught you journal on the left side somewhere, or maybe in that top white block, cause that's what I would do before the lines is write four or five things that you're, you're grateful for, you know, every single morning before you start writing anything down, or maybe use that to put a gratitude, uh, sort of a quote, a quote of gratitude at the top to kind of keep you centered for the day. Um, but what gratitude does is, it makes us happier. Um, it strengthens your emotions. It develops you personally. It de develops our personality. And how does it do that? It makes us more optimistic. You know, it's like when we do these things, when we have this gratitude, when we believe um, in the greatness uh, around us and the goodness in life, we are more optimistic. So that, you know, oh, it's not going to work. When somebody says that, you know, it's like, how do you know that? Like, I remember I was starting Curlbox and I had no boxes or products and someone was at my house going, oh, sitting at my dining room table. Oh my God, how are you going to do this? You don't even have any products. And I was like, I don't need that. Like, I don't live like that. I live in an optimistic life. If airplanes are flying in the sky, I can figure this out, you know? And so that is why being grateful, having an uh, attitude of gratitude is helpful, makes you less materialistic. You know, when you are able to give things away, you don't need this because you already have everything. So I tell people all the time, I have everything that I'll need. So I am a sharer, like a big, big, big time sharer. I share a ton. Um, makes you less self-centered. You know, everything's not about you when you can start focusing on the other person or other people in your life. Um, gives you more self-esteem because it takes a real grown-up and a real, or uh, a real mature person to be grateful and thankful all the time. You know, in any, in any, you know, no matter where you are in life to be able to be, uh, have that grateful attitude. Um, which, and the most important one to me is that gratitude helps you bounce back. You know, like that's the thing when something doesn't work out for me and I'm not saying that I don't get upset, but I'm always like, you know what? Like if this is my biggest problem or if this is my only issue for the day, I'm doing really well. And what I know about life, because I've lived it for almost 36 years, is that something else good is going to come along. So I'm not even worried. This isn't for me. That wasn't for me. What's for me cannot pass me by. And I know that. And if you want to put that at the top of your journal page every day, what is for me will not pass me by. So if that passed me by, it was not for me. Moving on. Number five, practice and preach going to the next level. 
act like you've already gone to the next level. Do some of the next level things. Do some of the things that you think are happening on the next level. Start living on the next level. And, you know, I do that by, like, before I really could afford to do some of the things that I do, I'd, like, go sit at the bar at the Ritz-Carlton, and i just have one drink because that's really all I could afford. And maybe that's not your next level. Maybe your next level is sitting in an office building or a boardroom um, because you want to rent the space or going out um, and doing, like, a walkthrough somewhere, you know, at a venue because you want to be a planner start practicing and acting like you're on the next level already get used to it and then preach start telling people that I'm ready to go to the next level you know I'm ready to start doing this I'm ready to take my life over here I'm ready to go there because the thing about it is that um, you have to start speaking this clearly so that you believe it and other people believe that you are ready to go to the next level I thank you so much for your time this morning. Any questions, like I said, mytaughtyou.com. Ask me anything, and I look forward to talking to you guys very, very soon. Bye.